Hey everyone, Vinayak here. I've had the Raspberry Pi for quite some time now and was thinking what new projects I could work on using this. One thing which actually stops me from using this even though it can be powered by a power bank is it is not portable. Well, we are going to fix that problem in this video. As I said, the Raspberry Pi on its own is not portable which means it needs an external display or input methods to be of any use. Here I have a 5 inch touchscreen display which I will be coupling with this Raspberry Pi. I purchased the 5 inch model after the 3.5 inch version of the same didn't work for me. The extra screen real estate should allow for more ease of use. On the back of the display are the I.O. or input output connectors which would connect directly to the pins on the Raspberry Pi. But do note there are 40 pins on the Raspberry Pi and only 26 on this display. Here's a backlight switch to turn the screen backlight on or off, essentially turning the image off lowering the power draw to save battery if using a power bank. Also present in the box is the HDMI to HDMI connector. It has the exact size and spacing allowing to connect between the screen and the Raspberry Pi. Which is nice as I don't need a long HDMI cable dangling between the two halves. The standoffs provided allows for some more support between the Pi and the LCD screen. A stylus. This LCD screen has a resistive touch screen so styli like these or even your finger will work. Let's get the box out of the way and get back to the screen. I won't be able to use this case while the Pi is connected to the LCD so better I remove it. Here's the Raspberry Pi in its actual form. It's quite small considering it's a mini computer. These are the pins which would align with the ports on the display. Hmm, only one of the standoffs will work with the Pi. There's no place to mount the others on the Pi. So let's get rid of those and use the one that works. Align the pins on the Raspberry Pi with the ports on the screen and carefully plug it in. This location looks good for a standoff to give it some strength as we would be using the touchscreen and we don't want all the force to be exerted on the pins. Cool, fits like a glove. Use the provided nut to hold it in place. That was easy. On this side we have the HDMI port on both the LCD screen and the Pi. The provided HDMI to HDMI connector fits perfectly between them. I have a version of Raspberry OS on this microSD card. It was formerly known as Raspbian, which is based on Debian Linux, optimized for the Raspberry Pi hardware. Insert the microSD card into the slot, plug in the power and we are off. The LCD using the HDMI to HDMI interface provides an image instantly. The 3.5 inch display I had earlier only had the image come through the GPIO pins which generally has a bad refresh rate. This being HDMI to HDMI was way smoother and is easier to install. We are in. We have booted into the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Hit next to continue. Hmm, you will notice that the touchscreen doesn't work. This is because the touchscreen drivers are not installed as yet. The GPIO pins are used for the touchscreen interface. Now we need to load the drivers. I am using a USB mouse to set up the Bluetooth keyboard as I don't have an extra USB keyboard. If you have a USB mouse and keyboard, you can start using them at once. You could also use this, the re wireless Bluetooth keyboard which also has a touchpad on top. Also we need the Wi-Fi to be connected as we need to download the drivers to install. Ok now that the keyboard and Wi-Fi are set up, we can run the required commands to install the touchscreen drivers. Open up terminal and type in git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash good tft slash lcd show dot git. The same is also available in the description and on our website so you can copy it from there. The Raspberry Pi starts to download the driver from the git repository. Once done, we are back at the prompt. Then we type in chmod minus r 755 lcd show cd lcd hyphen show and sudo dot slash lcd5 show. This runs the lcd code for the 5 inch screen. Now the raspberry pi will update the touch configuration files and reboot.
the touch screen now works. The Raspberry Pi was being powered using a plugged in micro USB cable. Let's shift to a power bank. You will notice that there's a micro USB port on the LCD screen too. We can power the Pi by connecting the power cable to either the Raspberry Pi itself or via the display micro USB port. This time I'm using the display to power both the devices. The power bank I have with me is the Ambrain 20,000 mAh version, making the Raspberry Pi completely portable. Let's open up the browser, YouTube and let's test video playback. The playback is smooth, but we have no way to enter anything on screen as we don't have an on screen keyboard. So, for that, we need to run sudo apt install matchbox keyboard. I chose to use the matchbox keyboard package as it's the most stable for Raspberry Pi while also not chewing up too much of the Pi's limited resources. Once done, hit the Pi icon on the top left, accessories, keyboard. Now we have an on-screen keyboard, not requiring to have to use a physical keyboard connected anymore. It's not safe to carry this Frankensteinian creation around, all open to the elements, so I went forward and printed a case for it. This is how it looks. The case is not designed by me. I have shared the URL for the same in the description. This is the final implementation. Now the Pi is ready to deploy code which could run portably not having to be tethered to a power adapter. I also printed these stands, used it from another STL, I have shared the same also in the description. So that was it. Hope this video helped you get your uh, Raspberry Pi and an LCD display paired and also some ideas on how to use it. I have a few coming up so stay tuned. If you have questions, you can write in to us at tech at talkingstuff.net or WhatsApp me at 9652578833. Also make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be informed when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.